Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I want to share five tips on how to use nano focusing lenses on your Olympus OMD cameras. Let's do this. One great advantage of using a mirrorless camera such as the Olympus Micro Four Thirds system is the ability to adapt to almost any lenses out there. This opens up a lot of opportunities. You can use old vintage lenses, your existing collection if you have any, or you can buy budget and really cheap manual focus lenses to be used on your Olympus cameras. For those of you who are very new to the Olympus OMD system or have just migrated over to the Micro Four Thirds system, Olympus does include some very useful features in the camera that can assist you in using your manual focusing lenses. I want to share these tips and there are also some things about the camera that you have to be aware of. Tip number one, do not use shutter parity mode. You may use any other modes, you may use program, aperture parity or full manual, just don't use shutter speed parity. This is because usually when shutter speed parity is being used, the camera controls aperture. In this case, that is not possible because there is no electronic communication between the camera and the lens. The lens that you're using is a fully manual lens. The only way to control the aperture is to physically turn the aperture ring on the lens itself. Therefore, the camera cannot control aperture. The shutter speed parity doesn't work. For most general shooting, I use aperture parity or program mode. It doesn't matter which one you choose. The camera will decide the right shutter speed for you. In some cases where you need to override the shutter speed, say you want to slow down the shutter speed to induce motion blur in your photograph or to capture the light trail, then you have to go to full manual mode. Again, don't use shutter speed parity. Go to full manual mode, then from there you can adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Tip number two, turn off the live view boost. This is important because as you adjust the camera settings, the shutter speed, ISO and exposure compensation, the exposure changes will be shown live on your LCD screen or your electronic viewfinder. What you see is what you get. Since you're using a fully manual lens, you have to control the settings manually. Having that live exposure simulation, it will definitely help you greatly. To enable the live view boost, you have to go to menu under the cogs tab, go and find D, D for display. Here is in D2, live view boost. Some of the other cameras will be in D1, so it's either D1 or D2. So this is EMO Mark III, it's in D2. You see live view boost. Make sure that it is turned off for manual shooting and for others it is turned off as well. Once this is turned off, as you adjust exposure compensation, you can see that the exposure is being reflected. Say that if I go to manual and if I adjust the shutter speed, you can see that it is reflected as well. And if I change my ISO value, it is also reflected in the live exposure simulation. This will definitely help you to achieve your exposure more accurately. Tip number three, focus peaking. I find that focus peaking is the quickest way to achieve focus using any manual focusing lens. If you don't have a lot of time to fine tune your focus, I find that focus peaking is a very effective way to approximate focus and it still gets you the shot most of the time. Of course, focus peaking will suffer if you're shooting in very low light and low contrast conditions and it's not always 100% critically sharp, accurate in focus, but for most general shooting scenario, if you need to be quick, focus picking is a very good solution. To enable focus picking, you need to assign one of the custom buttons on your camera to activate focus picking. To do that, we go to menu. Under menu, we go to the cogs again. Under the cogs, we go to B, B for buttons, and we go to button function. Usually, it's the first one for most cameras. You go to button function, and you find 
any one of the buttons that you want to customize or reassign for focus picking. In this case, because it's easier for me to show you, since the button is here, I'm going to assign the AEL and AFL button for picking. It is already assigned as picking. You can see there's all the other functions that you can assign it to. I'm just going to go back to picking. Where was it? There it is. Once you've selected focus peaking, to enable it, all you have to do is just press the button and peaking is enabled. Once this is already enabled, as you turn the manual focusing ring, you can see that the area that is in focus will be highlighted in red. There are other focus peaking settings that we can further customize and adjust. To do that, we go to menu, then we find D3, D for display 3, you can see picking settings. Here, there are other things that you can change. You can change the color from red to yellow or white, black. Uh, stay with red for now. You can change the intensity to low, medium, or high. I'll just stay with normal. And of course, you can see here, image brightness adjust. You can do whether you want this live view to be brighter or not to help you to adjust for your focus peaking. But I leave this to off because I don't want it to mess with my live view simulation, which is what you get. So I'll basically leave this to default, but you can customize them if you want to. Tip number four, magnified preview. If critical focus accuracy is something important, then magnified preview is the best manual focusing technique I can recommend for you. It is cumbersome, it is time consuming, so if you're not in a rush, if you can spend a little bit of time to fine tune your focus, using magnified preview will be the best solution. There are two ways to enable magnified preview. The easiest one is to use the touch screen on the LCD screen. Just tap on the area that you want to be magnified and press the bottom right corner and you bring up to the magnified preview already. You can use the dial on the camera to adjust the magnification. It can increase or decrease. Let's say that I'm okay with the seven times. You can move it around as well. Let's say I move it there. Then you can use the manual focusing ring to turn it to fine tune your focus. Let's say that I'm happy with this focus. Then you can tap and tap out. Then you can take a photograph and you can preview. You can see that the area that I wanted to be in focus was tack sharp. The second way to enable magnified preview, if you're not using the LCD screen, if you shoot through the electronic viewfinder, is to assign one of the custom buttons for magnified preview. Similarly, go to menu under the cogs, go to B, button function, then we find out, reuse the ELFL button. Here you choose magnify. If you have already selected magnify, press that. And once you press this shortcut button, which is already assigned for magnified preview, you press that, you see that one little box. Similarly, if it's already in the location that you want to magnify, press that button again for the magnified preview. Tip number five. Lens image stabilization settings. Because you're using a manual lens, there's no communication between the camera and the lens. The camera doesn't know what the focal length of the lens is. Therefore, it's very important to tell your camera what is the focal length of the lens so that the in-body image stabilization of your Olympus cameras will work effectively to stabilize the lens. To change the focal length for image stabilization, you have to go to the image stabilization setting. The quickest way to do that is to press OK to activate the super control panel. Then you find the image stabilization setting here, go in, then you see focal length. To do that, you have to go to info, press info, then you can change the focal length of your manual lens. So currently I'm using the Kamlan 50mm f1.1. So I'm gonna change this to 50mm, then the image stabilization will work effectively for this lens. That's all the tips I have to share about using manual focusing lenses on your Olympus OMD cameras. Did I miss out any important tips? If you have any additional tricks to share, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure others will benefit from your sharing as well. I sure hope you found some of these tips useful. If you do, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can donate directly to my PayPal account. I'll leave the links in the descriptions below on how you can do that. Any small contribution can go a long way. It'll keep me alive, it'll keep this place going so that I can continue making videos like this and share it with you guys here in this channel. 
If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you've not already done so. And I will definitely see you in the next one. If you can, please go out and take more photographs. Please stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.